All right, thank you, Sanda. Hey, everyone. This is Bilal from Speckle. I am a solutions architect. And today we are going to talk about connection we created for Power BI. So as you know, Power BI is a business intelligence and data visualization tool that allows you to transform your raw data into interactive and visually appealing reports and dashboards. Some key features of the Power BI starts with the data connections it has. So it connects to a wide range of data sources, including databases, cloud services, and online data sets. And it allows you to transform your data with Power Query. So you can do any you know, cleanups, extend, and make it ready for your report. You can create interactive reports in Power BI. It has a really easy to use drag and drop interface, which allows you to create visualizations like charts, graphs, maps, and tables. So you can get real-time insights from your Power BI reports. That is actually what we are going to highlight in this session. We will connect to the Speckle server and do some, you know, send some new versions from Revit see those changes being reflected in Power BI and and finally you can also do natural language queries uh, on your data recently Power BI enabled a Q&A feature which allows you to ask questions using natural language and receive instant visual answers so we talked about the you know extensive data connections Power BI has but does it really connect to the AEC applications we use the answer is no, to be honest. So Power BI, even though it, it, it's a really powerful, you know, data visualization and uh, it allows you to get data insights uh, from data sources, it does not really connect to AEC applications. So your BIM, CAT, GIS data is stuck in, in the host applications. And this is actually where Speckle shines. Speckle connects to various applications, allowing you to exchange data between different app apps. And specifically, we're going to highlight the connection from AC applications to Power BI in this session. And specifically, we're going to talk about the Revit Power BI connection. So let's dive into it. What are we going to do? First, we are going to send our model from Revit to Speckle and then receive it in Power BI. In Power BI, we are going to view the model in 3D within the Power BI environment, and then we're going to extract some metadata, some properties from what we sent from Revit. And we will use the coloring functionality of uh, the 3D viewer visual to color our model in 3D. And then we will also highlight the link aspect of the connection. We're gonna make some changes on the Revit end, send those to Speckle and see them getting reflected on the Power BI end. And finally, we will also extend the received speckle data with an external data source. In this case, we will extend the Revit data with another table created in Excel. So there are two different environments. One is the data source in that case is Revit and another one is Excel. And we're going to create a relationship between those two uh, data sources in Power BI. So what's What's our scenario? In this case, we will create a 3D real estate uh, dashboard for our client who owns the famous Snowden Towers building, right? He wants to understand how much money he's gonna make out of this building. And this is gonna be the, uh, the output of uh, this session. We will create this beautiful dashboard where we have the 3D viewer as well as Power BI's built-in uh, visual uh, cards and graphs and charts. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into Revit. In this case, uh, the first step of going from Revit to Speckle is you need to create a project. In this case, I already created a Speckle project for this community standup. And I will send only the rooms from this model uh, to a model that I created in Speckle named Rooms. And the way I filtered out only the rooms category is by simply selecting category from this drop down menu and search for rooms and select it. Once I do that, when I click on send, what the Speckle connector does is it converts Revit rooms into a Speckle compatible format, which is platform neutral. So we can receive the Revit data converted into Speckle data 
in Power BI. So what I can do now is I can actually share this link in the chat. So if you want, you can also view this model. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the data coming from Revit inside the speckle interface. As you can see, rooms are 3D. Why? Because if you don't know it, now you're gonna get uh, you're gonna be surprised. Rooms are actually 3D elements in Revit. They have a boundary, they have a volume, so that's why you see them as 3D entities inside Speckle. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna receive this data in Power BI. So let's do that. Here I am in Power BI, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on get data. And if you install the Speckle connector correctly, which we already have a tutorial for, you can uh, follow, follow that video and it, it should show up under the data sources. So what I'm gonna do now is simply paste the URL that I shared in the chat and paste it into this dialog and click on OK. So I already authenticated, so my uh, connection to the server is secure and the data is fetched right here. So once I click on load, my data from Revit, the BIM data with its geometry and everything, is now getting received inside the Power BI environment in a tabular format, right? So that's actually, we received the data. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna rename this query to rooms like so, and let's do this in 3D inside Power BI. I'll add the 3D viewer visual, Let's actually make it something like this. And I'm also gonna collapse the filters so you can see it better. So let's select the 3D Viewer Visual. And once you do that, you can see this asks for a couple inputs. In this case, the mandatory inputs to view your model in 3D are the first three ones, stream URL, commit object ID, and object ID. And if you examine the received data, we automatically generate those columns for you. So you don't have to like, you know, go get into Power Query, extract those, et cetera. You don't have to do any of that. So simply drag and drop the stream URL into the stream URL input. Do the same for commit object ID and object ID. Once you do that, you can view your model inside Power BI. This is already pretty magical. So, we send the data, we receive it in Power BI, we view it in 3D. Let's extract some useful information out of the received data. So I will open Power Query by clicking on Transform Data button. And as I said, you know, the data from Revit is now in Power BI in a tabular format. And the structure of the data is we automatically generate some columns. And one of those columns is speckled type. This indicates the type of the object, right? Uh, if you examine it, you can see there are some mesh objects which represents the geometry of the room element. In this case, we're not really interested in the geometry, but rather we are interested in the room object itself. So I am going to select object.buildElements.room, and there is this record thing right next to it. So in this case, records uh, represents the object itself because beam elements and you know any elements uh, inside CAD applications, beam applications, GIS applications, they are they have complex structures, so they can't be easily represented as lists or tables inside Power BI. So the data type that corresponds to that object structure in Power BI is records. So that's why they are received as record objects. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select one of them and we can actually see the properties of this room element, such as its name is highlighted under the name key. We can see its number. We can see its area as well as its level. So these are the four keys that I'm gonna extract from the received data. And how do we do that? There are multiple ways. In this case, I'm gonna to go to add column, click on custom column, and then within this dialog, I will give my uh, new column name, the name of name. And simply, we're gonna extract from the data column, we want to get the key name. If I click on okay, now we can see the names of the room elements like so. Let's do the same for number. I'll name 
the column name as number and it's going to live inside the data column number key. Let's extract that. Here are the numbers. And also, let's do it one more time for area. It's going to be inside data and area. Click on OK. And ta -da, we have the areas available here. The data type of area should be decimal. So I'm going to change that by simply clicking on this and change it to decimal number. We could have done that within the Power Query environment as well. But just to keep things simple, I'll go with the UI elements. And lastly, we also want to extract the level information, right? Let's do that. I'll click on custom column, name my column as level that lives inside data and level. Click on OK. And as I said, as you can see, the extracted value is also another record object. So that is because, you know, BIM elements, they may be complex. So records can also contain records. That's why in this case, I'm going to select one of the records and see what value I want to extract. In this case, uh, you know, they have the name, the elevation, whether if the view creates, uh, whether if the level creates a view in Revit, et cetera, we can see all of its properties here. In this case, I am only interested in the name of the level. So what I will do is I will edit this query by clicking on this gear icon right next to the step and say, extract the name of the level too. And click on okay. Once I do that, I get access to the names of the levels. And as you can see, we also get a bunch of errors. That is because those keys, name, area, level, et cetera, does not exist in a mesh geometry. And we can easily, easily get rid of uh, them by highlighting the red line and click on remove errors. And ta-da. Now, our data does not contain any errors. So let's load this back into Power BI because we cleaned our data, right? We extended it with, we extracted some uh, metadata from the received elements. And let's wait uh, while it updates. All right, it's loaded. And next step is actually, uh, next step is actually coloring the elements right and since we already extracted uh the data we can easily use one of those to color our elements so the 3d viewer visual has a color by functionality i'll simply drag and drop the level as the color by input and it will color elements based on their levels okay awesome let's now add some power bi elements to our dashboard as well i'll start with the slicer and in the slicer i will have my levels let's make this a bit smaller so we have room for other visuals as well and the beautiful thing about this connection is actually let me add a tooltip data to my visual as well so when i select an item here i get to see what its name is right I can do the same for number and level two. So this tooltip data will show up in the viewer when I select an item here. We can rename this from this dialog like so. Instead of first name, it says name. Let's do the same for number and level. And perfect. Now, when I select a room in the 3D Viewer Visual, I can see its name, its number, as well as its level. The beautiful thing about this connection is it also interacts with other elements, right? So if I filter out levels in this visual, they also get isolated in the 3D Viewer Visual. Let's do the same for level two, level three, so on and so forth. So this is the interaction part. Now what I want to do is I want to highlight the uh, live aspect of, of this connection. So what I will do is I will color my rooms by their names instead of their levels. 
So I can see what rooms have the same name. And I will select this one, which has which lives on the level five, and its name is office units. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the room name in Revit, send it to Speckle and receive it and see those changes getting reflected here. So I'll change it to green roof, right? Let's switch back to Revit now. And here I will open level five. And what I will do is I'll select this office unit room here and change its name to green roof and apply. After I do that, I'll send this back to Speckle. So again, it's doing the same conversion process, uploading it to Speckle server. And then I'll go back to Power BI and simply click on refresh. So this will fetch the new version we sent from Revit. And hopefully those changes will get reflected in the, uh, the data type as well as in the 3D viewer visual. So let's wait a minute so it refreshes. And ta-da! Now this item is not an office unit anymore. It is green roof. So you can make your changes on the Revit environment, send those to Speckle, and see those getting reflected in Power BI. So this was the live link aspect of this connection. Uh, finally, I also want to cover how to extend your Revit data with an external data source. In this case, what I have is I have an Excel sheet right here for rent prices. So I have my room names in one column, and then in another column, I have the rent price per square meter. And what I want to do is I want to get how much money I'm going to make uh, from those uh, spaces in my building, right? So let's do that. I'll close this Excel table. And let's go back to Power BI. And inside Power BI, I'll click on the Excel workbook. And within this dialog, I will select uh, rent prices Excel uh, Excel file. Click on open, and this will open the Excel workbook within the Power BI, and we will get the chance to select what we want to get into uh, this environment. Okay, here we have it, and I will select the table and click on load. And this will load the Excel data into my uh, Power BI environment. Right, so we have our new table right here. And I will also rename this table to rent prices. So now what I want to do is I want to create a relationship between these two tables using the modeling environment in Power BI because I have my room names in the Excel table. I already have room names in Revit. I can easily relate those two data to each other. So simply, drag the room name into the name column in our rooms table. And just like that, we've created a relationship between the two using the room names. So now what I want to do is I want to calculate the total rent I'm going to get out of this rooms uh, using their room area. So I want to create a new column in my table. I'll simply select this, click on new column, and then I will name this column as total rent. And this rent will be the duplication of rooms area by the related data coming from the rent prices table and the column name is rent. And I'll simply click on apply. And this will add a new column just like that. Okay, so let's see how much money we're gonna make. I'm gonna add a new card here and simply drag and drop the total rent is the total rent inputs. And I'll also select this and make this uh, in dollars and two decimals. And it looks like we're going to make 13.40K out of it. Hopefully that's correct. And I will also add the total area as another card here so I can see the total uh, 
number of area here. And let's add some more visuals into our uh, table. I'll start with seeing maybe the total area by their room names. So I can simply uh, set, add a tree map into my visual and say, I want to see the total area by their room names. Right, okay, now it is behaving correctly. Oh. So, because we were not making 13K out of that building at all, we, we, we should at least make a million dollar out of it, right? And we see the correct numbers here. And our total area in that building is 56.38K, which is okay. All right, so uh, yes, we can see the total area by names. Let's see how it distributes to levels simply drag and drop the details as the level so we can see like we are making a lot of money live uh, out of uh, we have a lot of uh, live work units we can see their distribution by level like so easily and we can also see how much money we are making out of each level maybe and I'll add a new funnel chart into my dashboard like so and here I will have the category as the levels and value as the total rent I'm getting out of it. So we can see we are making most money out of level four, right? We are making around 391K. We can see then it's level three and then level four, level one, so on and so forth. So uh, yeah, as you can see, you know, when you receive your data, when you free your data from the host applications, proprietary file formats, you can do a lot of things in environments like Power BI. You can clean it, receive it, visualize it, color it in any way you want, but also you can extend it with external data sources. So if you wanna learn more about this, uh, we've been creating a bunch of resources and tutorials around this. Uh, simply head over to speckle.systems and then for its last tutorials, we've, as I said, we've published a bunch of tutorials. And also don't forget to check our YouTube channel, YouTube at speckle.systems.